Home of the three piece combos. Wop, wop, wop. Pugilism Company. This is Reed, BBS, Blackbird Sugar. So today we have the Earl Spence Carlos Ocampo press conference at the Star in Frisco, Texas. This press conference officially kickstarts the proceedings, which will lead up to 6 16, June the 16th, where the city of Dallas will welcome home the prodigal son with title belt in tow and witness a man from Dallas defending his world title in Dallas for the first time in over 50 years. Dallas Cowboys, it goes without saying, first class organization. First class organization. It had custom jerseys made for both Spence and Ocampo. Had picks taken at the star, which is their practice facility, on the 50-yard line. Timing is everything, man. The initial plan was for Miguel Cotto versus James Kirkland to be the 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 inaugural fight at the star in Frisco. But injuries led to that not transpiring. And now, more than a year after that fact, the hometown boy, Earl Spence, will be the one to break the seal on that building in terms of boxing. Can't wait. Can't wait. Ocampo says he's ready to knock Spence out, which is what you want to hear. This man is walking into the lion's den. Now, he was a little bigger than I was expecting. Like, he's taller. He's taller than Spence. So, bigger man, or will be as big if if nothing else. I don't think any of that will matter come fight night, though. But right now, I'm just going to let that soak in and not even focus on when EJ beats the brakes off of him. Going to be quick hitting tonight. We got to get in out. In you, out you. Golovkin, Martirosian. Thursday should be the final press conference for that bout. And then the weigh-in Friday with, of course, the fight itself taking place Saturday. Cinco de Mayo from the StubHub Center in Carson, California. Televised by HBO. They are spewing major levels of bullshit. I told y'all last week how Golovkin said that uh, Vonis was a was a real fighter. He's a good fighter. He's a real fighter. And how he thought Vonis was the best of the U.S. Olympians in the 2004 Olympic Games. Not Andre Ward. Not Andre Durrell. Or Rasheed Warren, who's the only American male to have participated in three Olympics. But Vonis Martirosian. It just continues, man. Now, uh, Vonis is saying he's not scared. He's going to come forward. He's going to make it a fight. You have Golovkin, who's aiming for his 20th middleweight title defense, which would tie him with Bernard Hopkins for most defenses in history. Golovkin's come out and said his reign is much bigger and stronger than Bernard's. Like, huh, okay. The best guy you fought, Mr. Golovkin, you could say Daniel Jacobs, controversial win, or Canelo Alvarez, draw. I don't see the same names that Bernard Hopkins has. If we're just talking title defenses, I mean, De La Hoya, Felix Trinidad, like Bernard's beating a who's who, not to mention your your long time, your long term respected champions like Keith Holmes, like William Joppy. He's beating those type of guys, those gritty, those gatekeeper type dudes, the dudes that kept other guys from getting to their level. There's no way, long story short, there's no way Golovkin has a deeper or better list of names on his hit list in his 20 defenses than Bernard does. Kill that noise, man. Eddie Hearn, speaking of bullshit, he says there's a 70% chance. Team Joshua is talking with Team Wilder. Eddie Hearn says there's a 70% chance this could get made. He's also kind of flipped the script a little bit. Not that you can believe anything, he says. Uh, immediately after the straight out of Brooklyn card, 
it looked like Big Baby Miller would be facing Anthony Joshua in Joshua's American debut this August. But now Hearn is saying that the WBA is very adamant that Joshua fulfill his mandatory. So they're leaning towards Alexander Povetkin next. In Hearn's words, they'll either fight Deontay Wilder or Alexander Povetkin next. Stay tuned for that because anytime Eddie Hearn opens his mouth, he could be saying something different. It's like Bob Arum's old line. Yesterday I was lying, but today I'm telling the truth. Mikey Garcia and Robert Easter, we know they will be fighting at the Staples Center in L.A. We do know that. They're hoping to fight July 28th or at the very latest mid to late August for this 135 pound lightweight 135 pound unification. Garcia is from Oxnard and he hasn't fought in L.A. since June of 2011 when he fought at Staples. I'm a big fan of Mikey's and as I stated the other time I mentioned this fight, he's going to knock Easter out. David Hay and Tony Ballou they will also be fighting Cinco de Mayo overseas in Great Britain David Hay was stopped in the 11th round March of 2017 he's not favored to win this fight and Ballou who believe he played pretty Tony in the Creed movie for those of you who don't recognize him otherwise he was the villain he was the guy that Michael B. Jordan fought as Adonis Creed in the final fight of the Creed movie. Pretty Tony, I believe, was his name. Anyway, Baloo calls this Hayes' last 15 minutes of fame before the boxing world is rid of him. In other news, Erickson Lubin is apparently trolling Jermail Charlo. After getting knocked out in the very first round by Charlo, after convulsing on the canvas stiff as a board he's now trolling him talking about he's using cocaine and this and that that's that's just not a good look man I applaud Lubin he obviously wants a rematch and I applaud him for that but recognize your position bro more importantly recognize, recognize your leverage recognize your leverage or the lack thereof in this case there's absolutely no reason for Jamel Charlo to fight you. He just wiped his ass with you in less than one round. You want to call it a fluke, whatever, whatever. When y'all were in the ring together, what happened happened. Of course, as only the Charlos do, he had an excellent comeback to uh, Lubin. He said, you almost got dropped by a 37 and 21 guy. That's like... Drop the mic right there. That's a drop the mic moment. Speaking of Lubin's most recent fight, which he didn't get excellent reviews in. Uh, May the 12th, we will have Vasil Lomachenko against Jorge Linares from Madison Square Garden. The big room televised by ESPN. That's going to be an interesting fight. This should be hopefully the most challenged Lomachenko will be. I still, I mean, you can't, you can't not pick Lomachenko. Even if he were to face Mikey Garcia, the most I would make that is 50-50. I don't, Lomachenko would have to like fight at 140 against somebody like Terrence Crawford before I would even consider making him the underdog. But looking forward to May 12th as well. Got a couple brief historical notes. May 2nd, on this day, May 2nd, in 1947, Sandy Sadler KO Joe Brown. Sadler, he was, I think of him as the original Tommy Hearns. He was a featherweight, long, stocky featherweight. He was like 5'10", and especially back in those days, a 5'10 guy fighting at 126 pounds was unheard of. Like Hearns, Sandy had those broad shoulders and could punch like hell. Uh, he was. There's been many others of that same ilk. Jeff Chandler, who fought at bantamweight, was built that way. You've had Paul Williams, who couldn't punch. There was Milt McCrory, who trained out of Kronk, 
with Tommy Herms. There's been several examples. Michael Spinks to a lesser degree. Uh, Vernon Forrest to a lesser degree. But Sam, Sandy Sattler, he was the, the pioneer of the tall, thin, broad-shouldered guy who punched like hell, who could knock you dead with one punch. So shout out to Sandy Sattler, who on this day in 1947, KO Joe Brown. And a more recent note on this day, May 2nd, 2009, Manny Pacquiao KO'd Ricky Hatton in two whole rounds. That was a brutal, brutal KO. One of those that Hatton was never the same again. I figured Pacquiao would win, but I thought he would stick and move because Hatton hadn't been beaten at 140. And Pacquiao, you know, was still... We still weren't sure. This was he beat De La Hoya up, but De La Hoya moved back down to forty seven for who knows what. Had blood coming out of his arms because he rehydrated with an IV illegally right before fighting Pacquiao. So Pacquiao beating De La Hoya under those circumstances wasn't quite as surprising. It was when Pacquiao KO'd Hatton in his next fight that the, the eyes of the boxing world and Floyd Mayweather that's when he started getting spooked because Hatton gave him a good fight and went 10 rounds with Floyd Pacquiao destroyed him anyway on this day May 2nd 2009 Pacquiao Hatton that's about it for today y'all appreciate the comments I've been getting lately please keep them coming Hey, if there's topics you want me to talk about, if there's historical breakdowns you would like, feel free. Feel free to post about it. I'll respond to it. Try to respond to every comment because I appreciate the love. Please hit your uh, bell icon for notifications. And stay locked and loaded until next time. This is Reed, Blackbird Sugar, from the home of the three-piece combos. Wop, wop, wop.